G'day everyone, finally had the chance to sit down and, and record a, a review video of our Jayco Journey Outback. This is the 15.48.6. Uh, it's, and it's about 12 months on, so I think roughly 12 months ago I did a walkthrough of it, and since then we've done a lot of Ks in it. Uh, we've driven it all through the like uh, western New South Wales on the dirt from um, roughly Griffith to, through to Menindee. Um, no troubles at all. We've done heaps of heaps of nights. So in that in those 12 months. So in that time we have had it in for the warranty. Uh, there was a big long list. Nothing major, but I've. Um, I've got that list here of the warranty jobs that we had to get fixed up uh, by Jayco and Queanbeyan. Um, and I'll go through the van and show you some of the tips and tricks and things that we changed and mods and bits and pieces. It's not, not a great deal um, overall. It's bloody great. And so, yeah, let's, let's get into it, have a look through. So I use the list. This is the list of the things that went back to Jayco for warranty. So the hand pump, the hand water pump's a bit of a dodgy one. So we've had two in it. This is the second one and it's just gone funny as well. At first it was jamming and really rough and hard to push at jolts and it was squirting, spurting water out of the, out of the, the shaft and all this weird stuff. So we got that replaced. The second one was great and now it's, since we let the water uh, tank go empty, we drained it. Um, since we filled it back up, it's been shit ever since. The kids can't even do it, it's that tight. Jess can barely do it. Pull it up, jerky. Look at that. A um, couple of concerning ones were the rub marks. So there's rub marks under the front um, window cover and from the picnic table on the side, there was rub marks there on the, in, in the fiberglass. So, so rub marks. One, two, they've since put this rubber trim on here to stop it, but that one's pretty bad. Okay, picnic table. So this rubbed on here. Jacob put these little dots on since after the warranty and I can't see any rub marks anymore, which is brilliant. They obviously buffed them out. The front door was jamming when you separate it. So you can separate the fly screen from the main door and the front door and that was getting jammed and clicking. I think they fixed that. The thing that was jamming here was you turn that up. Still jams a bit now. Hmm. Anyway, it's all good. The awning LED light, so that's a real pain in the ass. The strip, um, I think it's affected by water, but they just, there was a full strip along and they started dropping out. So that's still the same. Jayco yet to get that um, replaced. That should be a light the entire way along. So this was probably one of the major ones. On our six week trip, we found that one of the brakes was rubbing and um, it wasn't until months later that I figured out probably the, the cause and it's to do with the handbrake. I started adjusting it all the way out to slacken off the lines that go back to the brakes to stop it rubbing and it didn't seem to do anything. And then I eventually figured out that the, where the spare sits, it basically the, the tire, the spare tire jams the brake cable against the chassis um, and doesn't allow it to release. So then the brake rubs, it's really bad design. Spare in there, and this is the cable. And this, this goes in directly in between the tire and the chassis and gets squashed. So you need to come and pull this out when you release the handbrake. So loose hinges on the cupboard under the couch. Loose grill above the stove top. Uh, we lost a clip off the outside fridge vent. These clips in here, we lost one of those, I think. A little wire latch on the front door was popping out. That's been replaced. That literally just holds the door open, which is super handy. The cupboard door beneath the fridge on ours was jamming and we couldn't, the latch wouldn't undo. So I ended up snapping the handle off. Since we got it back and replaced, it's again went a bit funny, so I just took it off. That cupboard I reckon is way better with no door on it. You just store towels or 
a few random bits and pieces under there. Because it's so low, to have a door on it, it's just awkward and annoying. The roof latches, I've had a few issues with those. Once I tried to push the roof up without unlatching, that was pretty bad. It's bent it and whatever, but I've had two of those replaced, the little latches that are mounted onto the roof. Last of all, the jockey wheel, that comes a bit uh, loose. So there's, you need a flat, big, massive flat spanner to get in to hold one side of it, and then you can tighten it up from the other side. But yeah, it's come loose again, so that's a bit annoying. Um, apart from that, that's it. The valves here, tire valves, we had one leaking, so I went and pumped this up once. Came back the next morning, was dead flat. Swapped out the valve, no problem ever since. Same on that side. We did once uh, smash this step on the ground. Uh, when in a rut, this smashed into the ground and bent, bent that part up. I um, had to do a bit of panel beating, just used a big uh, big shifter to clamp on here and bend it back down. It's actually fine, but you can see, compared to that side. All the canvas up there has been fine, no dramas at all, that's all sweet. You can pinch it if you're not careful when you put closing it down, so just be careful of that. No dramas underneath. Had no trouble at all with the awning. We did accidentally put a hole in our awning. And that's when this door smashes into it when you're trying to, trying to put the roof up or something. A lot of people get a roller put on the top of the door or something, but unfortunately we put a hole, it's two slices in our awning. No problems with the bike rack. As I said in the previous video, it's a bit a bit dicky, but it's been awesome. I'd get another one for sure. Just because having two bikes on the back and maybe another kid's bike inside is brilliant. Works really well. That light there gets flicked on accidentally all the time. It's just a rocker switch, so blue light, white light. No trouble with the lights. There's another one over there. Bunk beds. Nothing wrong with those, all perfect, no dramas. Some of these latches are a little bit dicky, but generally they're all right. One of the biggest things with this one that's a bit dodge is the table. So our kids lean on it and all the time and it just gets loose and loose. And, and so, I don't know if you can reinforce that maybe, because that's where it sort of holds it in place. This has all been perfect, no trouble with that. All of this, no dramas. Aircon thing, we never use this. That's something, if I had the choice to build one from scratch, I'd get rid of this. I don't, we've used it once since we've had it for the aircon, that was in Broken Hill. And another thing, I'd get rid of this. Anytime we have power, we're in a caravan park, and there's a camp kitchen. I'd rather either a big fridge or use that for storage, because barely use this at the moment. That is our bread storage. We put all our bread in there, which works pretty well. One thing I did in this hatch, this is the driver's side, was remove, remove the, the jack, the jack was here. You can see the hole there. I removed the four, there's a plate that the jack mounts into and it was taking up heaps of space in there, really annoying. I removed it and screwed it in underneath the kids bed. Easily the best mod ever, I reckon. The most basic mod you should get. The picnic table, it allows you to go away for a weekend without bringing an extra table. You can get away with just that table outside for a weekend, easy. We're all about simple camping and, and not taking too much junk. Take as little as possible. So this tray, we keep hoses, floor mat, sometimes some other stuff. That's our diesel heater tank. Carried both diesel and water in this one, even though you're not meant to put fuel in it. Trick with these is to, if you have them down like that at night, they can ding like this. So you put it up like that, no sounds, no dinging, it's bloody good. Good tip is to get yourself one of these folding steps. Uh, quite often, that step is very high off the ground depending on the land that you're parked on. 
under here that's the underneath of our diesel heater one mod I did is put a tap on this that used to be a bung a bung plug to your water tank but having a tap on there is brilliant although the best scenario would mean this comes all the way out here if that could come out further that tap because it's bloody hard to access especially when you're trying to fill something up very quickly I'm going to go through the hatches and pull everything out that we store in there chainsaw fuel fishing gear power gear cooking that's a grey water bucket and this is just swimming stuff 12 volt shower the chocks the, the hitch lock that's just for this that's just for um, going under the jockey wheel and this is full of all sorts of random stuff. Some little solar lights, butane, steel wool, pegs, hammer, bike lock, fire starters, clothesline, some little birdies that an old guy in Yamba made us. Ray and Merle, their name were. Ray made those for the girls, he gave them one. Merle made us some custard tarts, she was brilliant. I used to go to Yamba every year. Not sure if anyone knows that they're still there, it'd be cool to know. We did that mod. Just buy the cheapo Bunnings wine and... Beautiful. We added that, that little bin, that's our bin bag hook in the doorway. We put some little press, press lights in here. Oop, that one's falling off. There's one under here, press light, boom because it's super dark. So if we go under the bed, under here, we've got a, that's a, like a portable hot water shower system. My good mate Husey gave me that, or gave us that. It's a Coleman thing, so it's, uh, it's battery rechargeable. It's got a gas canister that screws on into it. Turn it on, away you go. Lights up a pilot light and instant hot water. Shower tent, this is just extra for drinks or food or, Whatever else, um, that gap there would be for a stand-up paddleboard, cans of coke, this little Iron Man 4x4 Dunny Easy Go. It's a tiny little thing. We get that out at night and put it in the doorway just for the girls to use. Um, and this this water is just extra water um, that does connect to the Coleman hot water shower system, but it also can be used for whatever you want. And then the diesel heater over there. It's really handy. That's pretty much full now. It's taken a while to get that whole space full. Previously, we just had the box and the toilet. But under here is where I put, it's, it's hard. I don't put much anything under here actually because it's hard to get to, especially when the bed's made up. But at the moment, we've got sleeping bags, the big sleeping bags, plus the jack. So I just screwed it straight to the floor. And this is the only other little mod we did. USBs. Are we there yet? 4x4. Four four. Made these. 3D printed salt and pepper shakers. 3D printed spice racks. They're meant to screw in somewhere, but I've just let them float free. So, um, But like, what the hell is that? Thanks, guys. Well, that's it. There it is. All in all, perfect for us, for our little family of four. Uh, the dog even comes with us every now and then, but you know, off grid, all across the dirt, whatever. Yep, does what it's supposed to, unreal. Um, and it was a perfect stepping stone for, from the Hawk. If I could have done it again and I could have afforded it at the time, we would have gone straight to this, skip the Hawk or the Swan. Um, set up and packed down is so much quicker, so much more convenient, just easy. You can fully access that when it's closed up like that, um, whereas the hawk or whatever, you, you're crawling on your knees trying to get into a cupboard or something like that, which absolutely sucks. And I think the only thing that it misses, and which is obviously it's the next step again, is that uh, toilet shower solution. So we've got the temper, the, the, the mobile solutions in there at the moment. If it was in the van, the 17 foot version, that's what we're looking at next for the future. We'll go for the 17 foot with the, the little ensuite inside, but I'll probably stick to a pop top rather than going a full van. I, I like how low that is. Um, getting into places sometimes there's been low hanging trees and that sort of thing and it's just um, no hassle at all to go boop, pop the roof up um, so yeah that's what we'll probably look at as the next next step go to the 17 foot 
Uh, in terms of towing, that is nice and small. I think it's right on about two ton or just under. And our Colorado wagon does it quite well. Overall though, these vans are sweet. Jayco, value for money, everyone bags them out, but far out. For what you pay and what you get, Jayco, awesome. <laughs>